Just first off, though, just what was it about the your offense today, maybe that, that their defense did, or what did you see that kind of made it? I just think it was a, it was a team loss. We came in there as a team. We fought as a team. We lost as a team. You know, you're just in all three phases, really. I mean, they had the game breaker on special teams. Uh, couldn't get much going offensively, and that's a credit to what they were doing and how physical they were. And you give up 200 yards rushing, you're not going to win many games. So it was a culmination of a team loss, and I give credit to uh, Oregon State. Uh, I thought they are well coached. I thought they were tough. I thought they were physical. And I thought they were well prepared. So. Uh, that's where I give the credit. It's not just one thing or one phase of the game. The, the Oregon State run, rushing offense, I, how would you gauge how you guys were able to I mean, slip the slip ups? What kind of slip ups did you see maybe in, in your rushing defense today? Well, I just think it was hit and miss. I, I don't have the, the exact stats, but you know, I think there's too many big ones. You know, I thought there was consistent for a while. Then the you know the game breaker there towards the end of the third quarter, that fourth quarter one was was the big one and. Um, just really got us in the wrong call at the wrong time and didn't quite get over the top on a fit or got too far up with the DT. I got to see the film really to check it out. But, you know, it's hard. They do a good job. You know, I think they do a really good job at the line of scrimmage and, and moving guys and staying consistent. And we just could never quite figure out their boot game tonight. And I thought they just kept us off balance a little bit uh, as far as on the defensive end. How do you assess the, uh, the, uh, the offensive line, especially with some moving parts on the right side of the line? And I don't think anytime you get yourself in a position where all you have to do is throw the ball, sometimes it's going to be challenging, you know, so to not play ahead in the score or ahead in the chains and, you know, the, the D line of, of Oregon State, they had some opportunities to tee off on us, you know, but I thought for the most part, you know, we kept Falili in the game because we felt like he was pretty consistent throughout the first half, you know, so we brought Grant in, you know, Make subbed in a little bit when he went down, but I think overall it was okay, but there's just too many times where we're just getting pressure and Cam is, you know, not being able to get through his progressions and doing a bunch of different things. So um, until I see the tape, I don't know exactly, but I thought it was it was okay. It seemed like the I know OSU's the defensive backs are you know kind of out. It seemed like the receivers were having trouble separating from them on some downfield stuff. No, I. I know they got a strong secondary coming in, and I thought we felt that. Uh, I know it's going to be hard to get off some press man and some man coverage. They have some phenomenal length out on the edges, and I thought they they played as advertised. I thought they really did. I thought we had some opportunities in the slot to, to make some plays, and we still got to make sure when we throw the deep ball, we're just not giving our guys opportunities to go make plays. And that's really been a trend uh, really the whole season, you know, let those guys go make some, you know, so that ball's ended up out of bounds too many times. So. I just think uh, credit to Oregon State, credit to their plan. I thought they kept us off balance, and we could just never get enough of a rhythm offensively. Going into the bye week now, what's, what's kind of your, your message to the guys? And, you know, you're obviously coming off a little bit of a thing loss and going into that extra week of preparation. What do you tell them going forward? Well, it's a little bit of a unique situation. We play the following Thursday. You know, but it, in the locker room, they, they should be disappointed with this result. You know, I, I know we prepared to win. We planned to win. Uh, they out-executed us, and, and they got the win. So it's disappointing headed into the bye week instead of excelling and, and having some energy and having some momentum. But at the end of the day, I told, told them in there, it doesn't get easier, right? And it's really easy to be committed to the process when everything goes right. It's really easy to be a leader when everything goes right. Okay, Now we're going to really reveal who we all are. All right, and that, that was the message in the locker room. And I think uh, our team will respond, but it, it doesn't get easier. You know, in 10 days or 12 days, we got Utah at home, uh, excited about getting back to Martin Stadium and being able to play in front of our home crowd. But it, in the Pac-12, it'll always be a grind each and every week. And I think the teams have showed that. And we got to show the type of team that we can continue to be. And there's a lot of opportunities left out there for us. This isn't the end. This isn't the last game. This isn't the end of the season. We got to make sure we're responding and getting better each and every day. And I'll take, you know, the, the responsibility to do that. You know, we, we didn't we didn't play our best today, and that falls on me. And we got to make sure we're doing everything we can to get our guys recharged and ready for a, a fantastic Utah team that'll be at our place. Do you feel the absence of guys like Bernard and Nikia in, in the offense and something like that, and just having those leaders on the field as well? But always, you know, but it's that time of year. I mean, it really is. They're playing with their backup quarterback. I mean, there's no excuses, you know. So 
I thought Renard uh, made the trip. He's a captain. I thought he had great energy. I thought he's had great energy all week, and he's approached it about as mature as a veteran player possibly can. And I think that's a credit to who he is as a person, his character, his mentality. You know, it was hard, you know, without Nikki, and he wasn't on the trip. But, yeah, we miss our, some playmakers, you know, but that's the depth that we're trying to build within our program to make sure when you lose guys that's going to happen in this game that you don't miss those beats. And, and our guys, uh, you know, I thought for the most part they fought really hard. Obvious difficulties out there, but were there some things that you were impressed by? Well, we don't quit. You know, I know I got a bunch of men in that locker room that they're not going to quit. They kept battling. They they kept believing that this thing could happen, even though we just couldn't quite get over the hump. Though we did a good job adjusting in some things throughout the game. You know, we had some opportunities to get some more takeaways. I think we dropped a pick. There were some fumbles on the ground that, that we didn't get an opportunity to get. There are definitely some moments and some things to build on. Uh, Leighton Smithson growing up right before our eyes as a true freshman wide receiver. You know, Rob and his continued growth. You know, Ali even to coming in on a in that type of deal and, and going out there competing his first time playing the position. So there'll always be positives, you know, and we'll find those and we'll identify those as well as the learns that we're going to need from this game.